Today we're going to look at PowerShell and using PS Remote. Now I've done this once before but I want to go into a bit more detail in this video than we did previously. So for the sake of this purpose we're going to have two machines, one being the remote machine we connect to and the other one that we're connecting from. So the remote one we're going to call red and the one we're connecting from we're going to call blue. So start off we're going to go to red and what we're going to do is check the network configuration we can see that it's set to public. Now that's not really what we want because we need to be able to open a few management ports in order to be able to connect to it. So we're just going to set the profile to um, private in order to be able to connect. Now this is only applicable if you're not connected to a domain because if you were connected to a domain then it would say domain and you wouldn't need to do any of this. So next up we're going to enable the PS remoting and we're going to use the force command and it's very important that you open PowerShell as administrator or run as administrator in order to be able to set these commands otherwise you will get errors because you won't have permissions from the PowerShell. Now the other part of this is we need to go over to blue now because red is configured but blue is not configured so believe it or not to connect to a remote machine you do actually need to do some work as well. Um, first off it's preferable if you set the network settings for exactly the same reason previously mentioned you do need to be able to connect to it and again if it's on public you might have firewall settings that will block this stuff so we'll switch it across the purpose of this video while well, I'm going ahead and typing this in is to kind of demonstrate how two non-domain joined machines can be used using PowerShell because you don't really want to be managing each machine individually now next up we are going to run uh, WinRM quick configure. Now the reason we're going to run WinRM quick configure is because believe it or not the machine we're connecting from also needs to have WinRM running. Now that gets enabled by default when you use the enable PS remoting but in this case we want to run it locally but not with enabling remoting so this is kind of a get around that we open up just the ports we need. However, you could theoretically also use this for connection, so it's, it's, it's maybe not the best one, but I want to show that there's another way of doing it and you don't need to use the same command and go the whole method. Anyway, um, now that that's done, we should be able to quickly open a, a PS session to, uh, sorry, from blue to red. So we're just going to go ahead here, put in the computer name, and since they're not currently configured for a DNS resolution, I'm going to just put in the IP address. So and immediately we have an error and you're probably asking yourself well what did he do there you go well the answer is uh, you need a thing called trusted hosts so even though blue knows that it can do a ps remote it won't ps remote to a machine that it doesn't trust so there's a quick way around that we're going to add to the trusted host list so we go set item dash path ws man uh, colon and then local host clients trusted hosts and then we go to space dash value and the values can be entered in multiple different ways in this case i'm going to put in basically uh, a wild card so i'm just going to go ahead and say okay everything that's on 10.0.0 star because i want to allow me my entire subnet in my lab this can also be done with slashes or other kind of formats so it's not entirely limited you you have plenty of options and it's going to ask me am I sure yes I am thank you very much and go ahead and connect and you can see now I'm connected to red I can do a quick host name proof yes I'm connected to red awesome now what's next well maybe we want to do something else like ooh, I don't know perhaps configure HTTPS well, that seems like a reasonable idea, right? So we're going to generate a certificate using the host name. And from that, we are going to simply import it to the listener service for the um, WS man. And I've also used the force remove there on an earlier line, just in case there was already one configured, which there wasn't because it's a brand new machine. But just in case I've taken the precaution of adding that line in case any of you out there need to use it. So. Now we can go back to blue and try to do a connection. Now, what is gonna be the problem here that we're gonna encounter is multiple ones. So first off, um, using PS intercession with 
IP address um, as we did before will not work. Now there's three reasons for this. First one is that there's a dash use uh, SSL which we need to use in the PS enter command otherwise it will not try to connect using the secure location which basically means a different set of ports so that won't work so we go go ahead and put dash use SSL now that's not going to work for another reason and that's that when we were on red we created the certificate and the certificates just in the same way that when you're using a browser you have port 80 for unencrypted traffic and 443 for HTTPS the same scenario here applies it's running on a different port so what we've got to do is go back and actually configure the Windows firewall to allow that port to be open so in this case that's not too difficult but what it does mean is that you've got to open 5986 and that's the wrong subnet I want to allow traffic only from my subnet so I'm just going to open up my lab 10.10.0 and then we've got a dash 24 so that's the whole C, uh, range and now that's configured so we can go back now to red again sorry from red to blue um, and from blue try to make that connection again now we're going to encounter a couple of more errors so just to be aware of that um, but you see now we got a much faster response so the first one's telling us that okay uh, we have an unsigned certificate we don't trust it so okay there's a quick easy workaround for that we just say create a new session and skip the certificate check because we just at this point want to connect to prove that it does work so we go ahead and go okay we create a variable we pump into that a new session and our new PS session contains uh, a dash uh, sorry PS session option rather uh, and a dash skip certificate right and then we go back to enter and in this case we say session options and we include our session options variable and we get another error so we're not checking the certificate but we are still getting an error because what we're trying to connect to which in this case is the IP address does not match the certificate so imagine if you created a machine called www.google.com and you tried to connect to it using a DNS record that said www.yahoo.com it says wait that's not me so in this case we need to connect with the machine name of red because that's what the certificate is called now the only downside to this is that red doesn't exist on my machine and I don't have DNS so I have no way of resolving red to the IP address so the first thing I'm going to do is quickly update my local file in order to be able to connect to it by effectively hostname so I just put in the IP address for a second and I'm going to put in the, the name red and save and close the file this will allow my Windows machine to quickly do the resolution and therefore we can test locally without any other interruptions so if I do a ping and keep in mind ping will not work because again Windows firewall is on and we haven't allowed ping but what it does prove is that red resolved to the IP address so mission successful host file works so far in resolving the name so in theory what we can do now is create our session once more uh, but this time instead of using the IP address we put in the name red because it will resolve now we've already updated the host file so red and hit enter and lo and behold we're connected awesome so we now have a certificate based authentication but we still don't have it set up the way that we would like so what can we do to take it one step further well the answer is we need to get hold of the certificate so that we don't need to do this jumping around in order to trust it so let's go back to red again and let's export the certificate that we created earlier so that we can import it into blue and that way blue will trust it without needing us to open a session option and tell it to skip the check so here we just say okay we'll export certificate and the certificate was the variable that we created earlier so a certificate file path 
and what I'm going to do is just dump it onto the C disk for the moment. Really don't recommend just dumping files onto the C disk like this, but hey, um, if you ever find yourself creating a lab, you probably find that you don't care too much about security in the lab. So, yeah, don't do it in production. Okay, file created. Now we need to get that file from red to blue. Now obviously there's the option for network shares, but I'm too lazy to set up a network share, so here's a nice easy option for me. Since I've already got working PS um, remote, um, what I'm going to do is copy the file using the PowerShell commands. So I create a new variable, um, and the new variable is going to be pretty easy, we're just going to call it red. And in that we're going to say new session, and the new PS session is going to be to computer red. And we're going to use the session options, and we also need to use the use SSL and session options, and our previous session that we created, which is called session. Very imaginative from my part. Okay, now that we've done that and opened a new session, we can go ahead and say copy item, sorry, copy dash item, and we say uh, use session. Da, 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 da. Or are we tabbing through uh, from session there we go from session and from session red and we say okay we're going to copy from C I think it's C yes C um, certificate and then we're going to select the destination is the next part which is we go ahead and say okay we're going to copy it locally so this could be any file path that exists but in this case, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to copy it to C again. So basically, copy from red to blue. Same file name, same destination, um, same destination. in this case, C disk. Again, don't do this in production. Have a secure location, proper folder permissions, blah, blah, blah. Um, you get the idea. Don't do this in prod. Uh, you shouldn't actually be doing this in prod anyway. But it's just to set up the example. And, oops. I did not put the slash so I got local folder so let's just clear that out a sec no um, let's skip down to C in order to get a better clearer view of this helps if I put the slash in it's always toward the end of the video so you start to get tired all right and do a quick ls and there okay, there's the cert now you can import the cert there are multiple ways of doing this, but I'm going to be super lazy and I'm going to import it directly uh, to the local machine into the root so that this cert can be used by anyone who logs in. So you could do it under current user. Current user is probably best if you want the cert to only be available to you. But in this case, I want it to be available to anyone who's going to be able to use Blue. So Blue's like my trusted workstation in my lab. I want every logged in admin user to be able to use the certificate. So we're just going to put the certificate store into local machine, root, and that's the first one. And because I want to make sure that we don't have any lookup issues, I'm also going to put it in the trusted store. So there we go, trusted publisher. And there it is, done. Ready to rock and roll. So in theory, now I should be able to put a new PS session, use SSL, and no other options there. So just, in this case, PS session, computer name, red, dash, use SSL, and everything should work. Bingo, we're connected. And that's how it works, setting up a whole system in one hit.